All right, so let's talk a little bit about how the NAR looks at sexual harassment. <clears throat> and is there any difference or is it a layer added on top? I'm going to suggest it's a layer added on top, mainly because of some of the new rules the NAR is incorporated, we'll talk about. All right, so the NAR, the NAR defines any harassment is, of any form is prohibited. Appropriate, inappropriate conduct, comments, displays of action, gestures based upon a person's race, color, religion, national origin, sex, uh, sexual orientation, gender identity, or other protected class. Now, sexual harassment is just one form of harassment. Sexual harassment includes individuals of the same or different sex so we've touched on that once before with the EEOC. The NAR has the same uh, outlook. It is strictly against the rules. I don't know why I paused when I said that. I was actually thinking about ahead of something. Of course, it's obviously strictly against the rules. But sexual harassment, like all harassment, is prohibited. And they define sexual harassment as either a verbal, nonverbal, or physical abuse. All right? So verbal, like sexual innuendos, comments, jokes, uh, sexual propositions, or threats that would include any of these. Sexual threats. All right? They also have a, a distinct category called nonverbal, suggestive, like pictures or graphic commentaries or sounds or uh, motions, I guess would be a gesture. They also have a definition of a physical sexual harassment would be obviously any unwanted contact such as touching, pinning, pinching, patting. They mention coerced sexual intercourse which in my opinion could rise itself to actually a criminal activity, um, but I think they're hanging their hat on the word coerced, meaning if someone says, do this and I'll give you a promotion, that would be coerced. If it's an assault, in my opinion, that could be a whole different thing with a criminal case involved, all right? Um, so, NAR actually has a change in stance. They, they have changed their stance in one thing. So unlike the old NAR policy, the new policy specifies that sexual harassment may, may involve people of the same gender and orientation. So what I just mentioned a moment ago when I said it could happen between the same genders, that's actually a new stance by the NAR, okay? The old policy just said sexual harassment does not include occasional compliments or, volu or voluntary relationship between its members and staff. The new code now is silent on this, meaning that they don't talk about consensual relationship. So it is now silent, all right? The old policy said sexual harassment does not include this. The new policy left that completely out, so they have kind of changed their stance on uh, voluntary relationship and occasional comments. What does that mean? Well, I'm not a practicing attorney, but typically when a company has a rule and then the new iteration, that rule has become silent, mean they don't address it, that now means they are not in favor of that as being the exception. Now, here's another tip for you. Under the professional standards policy number 29 of the Code of Ethics, all right, practice 10-5, that we are to uh, be adhered to the Code of Standards in their activities Thus, a violation of Article 10 is supported by standard of practice. What, where it says, Realtors shall not use harassing speech 
hate speech, epithets, slurs based on the protected class in any media or conduct, regardless of whether related to their activities in the real estate business or their identification as a realtor. So what does that say? What that's saying is that you do not necessarily have to be acting as a real estate professional, i.e. a realtor, to be held to this standard. If you are doing something outside of work and something happens, could the NAR apply standard of practice 10-5 uh, against you, Article 10, Standard of Practice 10-5, and say Raymond violated sexual, the Code of Ethics because he was charged with sexual harassment. Well, he was out at a bar with friends. He wasn't showing houses. Doesn't matter. He's an acting professional and represents our group. We don't want that. All right? So please be careful. That does, so what that also means is your posts on like Facebook or anything like that could potentially still make you vulnerable to sexual harassment cases, even though you may be posting something of your own, somebody else sees it and goes, dude, that's wrong. Can a client harass a realtor? Most assuredly, yes, they can. If the client's making you feel uncomfortable in any way or harassing you in any way that cannot be denied or debated, you need to protect yourself, all right? Now, I know most people get caught up in this whole, do I want to lose business or handle the situation badly? But you definitely have to understand, do not become a victim of this behavior, all right? We are living in an era now when it's very inappropriate for sexual misconduct or sexual harassment or any harassment to be tolerated by anybody. So, although you can't necessarily change that person's mindset, if they are a warped and twisted person, there may already be a warped and twisted person, but you need to decide on your activities what you're going to do. So there are a few ways that you can, in essence, protect yourself if you are being harassed by a client. You need to draw boundaries. You need to let your client know that you are there as a professional. This is not a social call. We are not socializing. We are doing business. Make sure that you can at all times cut down any of the time that you are alone with that person to reduce that potential for problems. You don't have them come to the office to meet you. Try and see if the listing agent, hey, you want to be present when we show this property? Um, things of that nature. Most assuredly, keep a conduct. Keep record of what's going on. Keep a conduct. <laughs> keep a record of the conduct. Write down, even if you don't file anything later, you need to make sure that you've got something so that you could say, on our first meeting, he said this. We went to our very first showing, he tried this. That is why he is no longer my client. If you decide you need to report this behavior, you will then have at least a record showing that pattern of pervasive activities. Remember, we go back to that single activity versus pervasive. If the client is backs off, let's say they do ask you out, and I've told you before, I've got friends that have been hit on, quote unquote, finger quotes, <laughs> by clients, and they need to say, hey, you know, I'm not interested, or I'm married, or I'm seeing somebody, and that person said, oh, okay, if something happens like that, I would say that may not be a big issue. You know, you can't fault somebody for asking somebody on a date, but if they say no, then they back off, that's fine. You still might want to log that in your record so that you can at least have that as a, a situation. You know, you might keep notes on your phone, keep notes somewhere. You might even tell your managing broker 
uh, your team member or somebody so that you can say, hey, I've been telling you know, my boyfriend this whole time about all this. Here are five of the events that has happened. Obviously, best case scenario or worst case, depending on how you look at it, you can walk away, completely walk away from the deal. All right. Never underestimate the bad decision or the outcome of a bad decision. I would much rather be, see anybody maybe not close the deal versus have to go through a problem of being harassed. So ultimately you could just decide I'm not using this client or the, this client's not using me as an agent or I'm not going to work for them. I meant in theory, you might pass them off to another person, refer them to another, uh, another agent, you know, maybe somebody, if they are male and you're female, you might hand them off to another male because the assumption would be, hey, they like females. Maybe they won't have this problem with a male. Maybe it goes the other way. If it's a female harassing you and you're a female, maybe you give them to a male part, one of your counterparts and go, hey, you uh, deal with them. At least maybe you can get a referral fee from that. All right, so that's the NAR's policy. Very similar. The one thing I want to point out once again is that whole concept of art, uh, standard of practice 10-5, Article 10, where uh, you can be held liable to these standards even if you're not acting as a realtor in that particular moment. All right, keep that in mind.